community. So we know how to find the uh, arc length of a helix. Um, and there is an in, in calculus, but there is another way that, that we already knew from um, uh, way back in grade school, basically. Uh, look at this picture. Uh, we take a piece of paper or, or a rectangle or whatever shape, uh, rectangle or uh, flat shape, uh, and then we draw all these um, uh, little uh, parallel lines with uh, that have the same um, th their equidistance with, uh, from one another. Every consequent ones have our equidistance from another. And so you guys know how to uh, roll a rectangular shape and make a right uh, cylinder. Now let's do that. And here we're rolling it. And then as we're rolling the piece of paper, I, we realized that, wow, those um, little pieces, the, the um, line segments that we drew in there are coming together and forming a, a helix on that. So that said, and uh, now I, I kind of want to know if there's another way of computing uh, the arc length of the helix, basically. Um, so now looking at that, uh, let's try to find another way. Here I can see if I know this length and that length, then because this is a right triangle, uh, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to compute this length. And then depending how many teeth I have, I can uh, basically find all of the, um, the arc length for the entire thing, basically. So over here, and, and this goes with when you have a, uh, when you only have complete teeth, then, then uh, if you don't have complete teeth, you just have to take a fraction of the teeth at some points and then complete teeth at other points. But uh, this is the distance between the two teeth and this is the perimeter of the, uh, basically perimeter of the um, uh, cylinder that this helix is sitting on. And, um, and then I'm doing this one more time to see that actually when it bends that, that side, um, when it rolls the, uh, that side of the rectangle becomes the perimeter of the, um, uh, of the right cross section of the cylinder basically. And that's the end of the story.